This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to explain a drama sci-fi thriller film called Lucy in the Sky. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. During a spacewalk in her first mission, Lucy Cola is overwhelmed by the sight of the Earth and the distant stars. Moments later, another astronaut instructs Lucy to return to the shuttle, but she wants to stay out for a few more minutes as she enjoys the view of the sun. A few days after returning to Earth, Lucy goes to NASA for a therapy session with Dr. Will Plimpton, the psychiatrist. Plimpton is concerned that Lucy might be pushing herself too hard because he already saw her training in the gym that morning. Plimpton tells Lucy about the time Michael Collins flew the Apollo 11 command module. After dropping off Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, he circled the moon several times. Collins wept when he reached the far side of the orbit after perceiving the darkness of outer space. Then, he wept again when he saw the sun and wrote that he felt truly alone from any known life. Before ending the session, Lucy assures Plimpton that she is doing fine. Later that day, Lucy visits her grandmother, whom she affectionately calls Nana. She checks on Nana's condition and lets her know that she's back from her mission. Nana asks her if she got a medal, but Lucy contends that she's not supposed to get one because she's only doing her job. Lucy then complains that her brother, Sebastian, dropped off her niece, Blue Iris, at their house while she was in space. When Nana asks about her next mission, Lucy reveals that she is aiming to be on the Orion space mission when it launches in 13 months. Nana encourages Lucy to work harder because she is not getting any younger. While training for the next mission, Lucy meets Aaron Eccles, a robotics specialist. When Aaron asks her for advice, Lucy tells her to do her best to get a seat on Orion. During a launch simulation, Lucy imagines herself going to space. That night, Lucy's husband, Drew, who works as a PR officer for NASA, approaches her to talk about something serious. Before Drew could say anything, Lucy guesses that he's going to ask her to try for a baby after one last mission. Lucy doesn't confirm if she agrees to get pregnant after her next flight. While having a snack at the NASA cafeteria, an astronaut named Mark Goodwin asks Lucy to answer some questions for his younger daughter. When the children leave to buy snacks, Mark invites Lucy to go bowling. Lucy seems hesitant, so Mark convinces her by pointing out that she is now a member of an exclusive club, which is composed of people who have seen the face of God. Later, Lucy calls Drew and tells him that she'll be late to undergo more training. After a bowling game, Lucy and the other astronauts talk about their experiences in outer space. Lucy finds out that the other astronauts feel the same way as she does. All they can think about is going back to outer space. Lucy's relationship with Mark develops as she continues her training. One day, Mark invites her to have lunch in the back of his truck. After their meal, Mark reveals that his marriage fell apart after he returned from space. When another vehicle passes by, Lucy hides because she's drinking a beer while on duty. Lucy says she feels like she's back in high school smoking under the bleachers. Mark surmises that Lucy never did any mischievous back in high school. When Mark challenges Lucy to disclose one wrong thing she did, Lucy kisses him. Mark reciprocates and makes out with her. When Lucy gets home that night, she finds out that Nana is there to have dinner with them. Drew forbids Nana to smoke indoors, so she asks Lucy to get her cigarettes from her purse. Lucy finds a revolver in Nana's purse while looking for the cigarettes. Before giving the cigarettes to Nana, she hides the gun in her bag. While Iris sets the table, Nana jokes that she dropped her father on his head while he was just a baby. Nana then tells Iris to look up to Lucy because she'll guide her properly. Drew wakes up at dawn and finds Lucy sitting on the roof. When he joins her, Lucy laments that people are no longer fascinated by the planet's movement around the sun. Drew thinks that people forget to look up at the sky because they're busy. Lucy notes that the sun rises every 90 minutes at the space station. Drew discloses that he prays regularly because he wants Lucy to return safely after the mission from outer space. Lucy argues that she's already home, but Drew says he doesn't think she is. When Lucy gets back to training, she finds out that Aaron has set a new record during an underwater simulation of a spacewalk. As Lucy prepares for her turn, Jim Hunt tells her that she must complete the test in under 8 minutes and 34 seconds. After the divers immerse Lucy underwater, Jim tells Lucy that her objective is to loosen 18 bolts on a space vehicle. The simulation begins as soon as Lucy gets into position. After a few minutes, Lucy hears a pressure alarm on her spacesuit. Jim tells the divers to get Lucy out of the pool as the water gets inside her helmet. However, Lucy refuses to let go of the vehicle door's handle and insists on finishing the simulation. Lucy finally lets go of the handle after loosening another bolt. The diver immediately takes off Lucy's helmet soon after getting her out of the water. Before heading home, Lucy and Mark make love in his office and watch the sunset on the roof. When she gets home, Drew notifies Lucy that Iris's father called. 
Iris seems depressed after talking to her dad, so Lucy consoles her. Lucy notes that Sebastian tends to get lost and forgets things because all he does is dream. Lucy shares that Nana always puts Sebastian in charge when she goes to work, but Lucy would always be the one who makes sure that he brushes his teeth, despite being the younger one. Lucy laments that the girls are the ones who always have to clean up when the boys make the mess. But Lucy tells Iris not to worry because women can do something that men cannot, which is to change. Back at NASA, Jim tells Frank Paxton to watch the footage of the simulation. He points out that Lucy's heartbeat was normal while holding her breath upside down for two minutes. Lucy grew calmer as the simulation continued, and she was able to finish the job. While Lucy is relaxing in a tent outside the house, Iris approaches her and releases a butterfly that just emerged from its chrysalis. Later, Drew and Lucy go to a restaurant to have dinner. After ordering a drink, they notice Erin on another table, so Drew invites her to sit with them. Not long, Mark arrives to have dinner with Erin to give her some advice about the upcoming mission. Lucy reminds him that astronauts are not supposed to mingle outside of work, so Erin assures them that their dinner is strictly professional. As they drive home, Drew surmises that Mark and Erin could be in a relationship. Lucy is bothered by the idea, so she relaxes by imagining that she's preparing for a space launch. The next day, Mark finds Lucy waiting inside his truck. Mark takes her to his house to prevent anyone from work finding out about their affair. As they make out, Lucy confesses that she was jealous when she found out about him and Aaron. Mark discloses that he felt the same about Drew. Mark tries imitating Drew's speech, but Lucy stops him and argues that Drew is a better person than the both of them. Later, Lucy asks Mark if he's sleeping with Aaron. Mark responds by asking Lucy if she's going to leave Drew. Lucy hints that she'll do it if Mark tells her to, but Mark advises her not to trust her emotions because they're not real. He notes that her brain is just reacting to chemicals. He further argues that her brain just wants her to feel good, so now she's having an existential crisis after her trip from space. When Mark offers her to drive home, Lucy refuses and tells him that she wants to feel good. When Lucy gets home, Drew tells her that Nana is in the hospital because she had a stroke. Visiting hours are over, so Drew will take Lucy there in the morning. When she visits Nana the next day, Lucy tells her to not give up because she still has work to do. Nana whispers an expletive in Lucy's ear to hint that she's still fighting. Upon their returning home, Drew confronts Lucy about the loaded gun she's keeping in the glove compartment of her car. Drew further points out that Lucy has been acting strange and is always coming home late. Lucy discloses that the gun belongs to Nana and she's keeping it because she's worried that something might bad happen if Nana keeps it. Nana passes away when Lucy visits the hospital again. During the funeral, Lucy recites the astronaut's mission checklist to keep herself from breaking down. Lucy suddenly starts tearing off the wallpaper in one of the rooms in their house, so Drew takes her outside to calm her down. There, Lucy tells Drew that she's leaving, and she doesn't know if she'll ever come back. Drew pleads with her to stay, but she confesses that she's with someone else, and she's also a different person since her return from the mission. Lucy then drives away with Iris to Nana's house. When they arrive, Iris asks her if her life with her deadbeat father will be as good as it gets. Lucy reminds her that she also had a deadbeat father and a drunk mom, and she was still able to get to outer space. The following day, Lucy listens to the radio broadcast of Mark's mission to space. Lucy is ecstatic to hear that the rocket took off successfully. She then imagines that she is one of the crew members on this mission. When Lucy reports for work, Paxton calls her into his office to inform her that she can't go on the Orion mission because of her psychological condition. Lucy pleads with him and points out that she's been training hard to get back into outer space, but Paxton contends that she needs to take some time off. Paxton notes that she can train recruits and help engineers with system upgrades until their next mission. Paxton then stresses that Lucy did a fine job as an astronaut, but she became too emotional. Lucy suspects that Mark had something to do with her sudden removal, so she breaks into his office and looks at his emails. Lucy finds several correspondence between Mark and Aaron. In the last email, Mark promises to take Aaron to San Diego when he returns from space. In an email to Paxson, Mark warns him that Lucy's behavior has become erratic in the past few weeks, so he suggests putting her on a break. Upon Mark's return, Lucy crashes his party and finds out that Aaron was picked to be part of the Orion space mission. Lucy then confronts Mark and tells him to convince Paxson to put her back on the mission. Mark thinks that Lucy is having a mental breakdown, so he urges her to see a doctor. Before leaving, Lucy hints that she will retaliate against him and Aaron. The following weekend, Lucy wakes Iris to tell her that she's leaving for a mission for a few days. Iris, however, insists on going with her even when Lucy warns her that the mission could be dangerous. 
Later, the two stop by a store to buy duct tape, rope, drain washing gloves, a hammer, an insect repellent, and a blonde wig. After leaving the store, Lucy calculates the speed that she'll have to drive to get to San Diego at the same time as Mark. While driving, Lucy hallucinates that Nana is in the passenger seat. Nana insinuates that Lucy has become soft because of her affair with Mark, so Lucy points out that she can withstand 8 units of G-Force during her mission from space. Lucy tells her that she's on a rescue mission to save herself because she got left behind. In a message that she left to Paxton, Lucy acknowledges that she wasn't ready for the experience in space, although she was qualified to do the job. She says that she has since learned that going back into space is her purpose and she needs just a little nudge to get back on track. After listening to the message, Paxton asks Drew where Lucy is, but Drew has no idea. Later, Lucy stops by a gas station to fill up the tank and three containers in the back of her car. When Iris looks into the compartment, she finds the revolver, so she hides it in her bag. Upon their arrival at the airport, Lucy looks for the gun, but Iris doesn't tell her that she hid it. Failing to find the revolver, Lucy wears a wig and takes the insect repellent with her. Inside, Aaron tells Mark that the airline lost her bag, so she has to report it to the office. Mark decides to get the rental car as Aaron waits for the airline to find her bag. Not long, Lucy enters the airport and follows Mark as he walks to the parking space. When Mark gets inside the car, Lucy emerges and confronts him. Mark reminds Lucy that she is a married woman, but she contends that nothing matters since Mark told her that feelings are only caused by movements of atoms in her brain. When Aaron arrives, Lucy tells her that she's making a mistake by getting into a relationship with Mark because she's smarter than him. She warns her that men like Mark will not let her be successful. Lucy then sprays Mark in the eyes with the insect repellent. Despite being blinded by the spray, Mark drives off, leaving Aaron behind. Lucy tries to warn Aaron that men will bring down her career, but Aaron can't understand what she's saying. Lucy runs to the upper levels of the car park when she hears sirens nearby. As the police cars catch up to her, Lucy dumps her wig and jacket. Lucy climbs a ledge and turns her back on the police before surrendering. Three years later, Lucy tries learning French while driving a truck on a farm. Upon her arrival, Lucy puts on a beekeeper soup and opens an artificial hive. Meanwhile, Iris recites prose by a poet named Mary Oliver in class. After closing the hive, Lucy takes off the hood of her beekeeping suit and stares at a butterfly flying nearby. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.